Game on! Finland against Poland, ladies. Let's go! At this point, Finland on the left, Poland on the right. Towers of Doom, map number one in the best of three. And let's get ready to rock and roll. I want to see what Finland can pull off today. Just in case that you haven't watched the previous matches, Finland actually lost against the Netherlands. The Netherlands then were destroyed by Sweden and Poland lost to Sweden as well. So Sweden is pretty much already through and they made it into the next round of the tournament. Poland is a huge favorite to claim that second place and Finland is probably the weakest team in the entire group. So it's gonna be incredibly difficult for them to make something happen here unless Poland has a massive, massive brain fart. And now that we're on Towers of Doom, I could see Poland memeing this a little bit. Obviously, in the Nations Cup, in the European Championship, we're going to have a huge discrepancy between teams when it comes to levels. And, well, this is one of those examples. So, uh, this could be an interesting series, it could be a fun series, but I don't really think that Finland has too much of a chance here, unless all of a sudden they really turn things around heavily from the last time they played. Chen gets banned, and the important part here is there is a hero open that's called Tracer. And DAB is just sitting there like, <gasps> do I maybe get Tracer? Do I get Tracer here? So normally it's just insta ban against Poland. But if DAB actually walks away with a Tracer pick, unless they pick it first now, then he would be a very, very happy panda. I'm not talking Chen or Lili here. So uh, yeah, there's a chance that that happens. And you do not want to go up against DAB on Tracer. I can tell you that much. Alarak is taken. And, well, this is going to hurt. DAB must be yelling at them right now. Pick her! Hello. There she is. With the best support that she can possibly get, the combo with Malfuri and Tracer once again strong. Uh, there's also one thing, by the way, that gets asked quite a bit, and this is why we don't have any teams from Asia in the tournament, why no North American teams are playing. And this is a European Championship. We're talking about the Nations Cup here the entire time, but it is indeed a European Championship. And the big problem, of course, with the inter-regional games is, as usual, the big, yeah, the big delay that you have and uh, the ping problems that exist with this. Since this is all played out online and there is just not enough money in any of this to uh, play it out offline, this is why we have no teams from other regions in uh, the Nations Cup here. Uh, Mango picks Lucio, so uh, I don't really know how he plans on dealing with a setup that is already developing on the other side with the Lucio pick, but maybe the idea is to... I honestly don't know what the idea is. Normally when you see Lucio, it's more so a macro aspect that you probably think about, where if you have Greymane or other heroes, you can rotate around the opponent and try to just get value there. But if you go for Diablo as your main tank, you normally try and get a combo set up, which means that you hope for Malfurion for a stun into Root or a stun into a Tyrande stun or something along those lines. At least the Rhaegar with that mix. Lucio is going to make that really difficult to execute. Sylvanas gets banned out. And what does Finland try to get rid of? Okay, they don't want to deal with Abath. I can understand that. DAB and Tracer is already tricky enough to deal with. If he has also some Abath support, then whew, don't want to do that. My question is Tacita. Does Blakitni go into Tacita? Or do they go for a different set setup here? Because if they really want to go for like a full-on Tracer, hyper-carry setup, then yeah, Tacita would be a great choice for them in the format that they're going to play around the middle in the bot lane. For the top side, yeah, there's Tacita. Okay. Could actually be played by Talufi, as it seems. Zadun on ETC for the front line. He was missing the last time that Poland played against um, against Sweden. They actually had to play with a sub player that obviously influenced the match a bit too. Okay, Urel together with Diablo, a bit of an old school comp. Back in the day of HGC, we had the combo with Diablo, Urel, and Deckard Kane, which pretty much never lost. Uh, insane win rate on that triple whenever a team got it. And now the last pick for Blake Hitney. We're looking at the offlane and what's it gonna be? I mean, there's plenty. We still go into... Ooh, Junkrat even. Okay! Screw it. Not a single... No second support here. Tassada most likely with the extra armor then on level 4 to support ETC. But now that I say it, you have Tracer. He's gonna go into Life Leech. So yeah, Zadun has to be careful. Zadun will have to be careful here. But DAB, all eyes on him now. Let's head straight into game number one on Towers of Doom. 
game number one. The best of three series starting things up on Towers of Doom on the left side. Finland with Sephiro on Hanzo. Mai on Urel, Rico on Diablo, Mango on Lucio. This is probably the weirdest pick in the setup that they're running here. And Chikabawao on Alarak. Whereas on the right side, Podiboss is playing Malfurion. Blikitni on Junkrat, one of his favorites too. Kinda expected a second side laner, I gotta admit. Well, a side laner per se, a second Five, melee hero, four, I should rather three, say. Taloof on Tacita. DAB on Tracer and Zedun on ETC. DAB, he doesn't really get to play Tracer a lot. He made a name for himself with his Tracer performance in HGC. And at some point, every like after he literally just destroyed complete teams with his Tracer play, everybody just agreed, okay, that guy is insane on that hero, screw that, he's never gonna play it again. And from that point on, whenever you saw them play, whenever you saw the Polish team play, whenever you see nothing change play, Tracer is pretty much insta bad against him. It's the first ban that comes usually through, and he must be incredibly happy that he actually has an opportunity to play the hero right now. But we'll see how it works. There is definitely a bit of a weakness on the side of the Polish team. They went into a lot of comfort picks, Junkrat being another one. But they are a bit weaker on the front line now, since they are currently only relying on to ETC. And that puts you a little bit more onto the squishy side, which in and of itself is not necessarily a problem. It depends a whole lot on how exactly ETC plays that out. And Mai at the top has now to even deal with two heroes, that so doesn't make it easy for him. So Poland is trying to just like play around the fact that they don't have a dedicated solo laner by simply putting two onto the top lane and having a three-man rotation at the bottom of the map in order to deal with all of this. So there is definitely a slight advantage for Finland now in the four-man at the bottom of the map, but it also puts incredible pressure onto my top side, and you can already see how this is playing through. There's an easy dominant position now for them. Malfurion goes down, <laughs> yeah, that's unfortunate. Pody Boss, of course, traditionally not a side laner for, uh, sorry, not a support for the team, but a side laner, and has to switch uh, slightly up in the Nations Cup. Yeah, but gets caught here. This is the problem that they have. Four versus three at the beginning of the game, so they have to play this a bit more careful before that happens. The interesting part is it's actually support killing support, so Lucio, for one second, was trying to be useful and actually managed to do that, taking the old man down. Mai at the top, still struggling against this, and the, the wall is falling. So they're taking this whole thing down. The same is obviously happening at the bottom of the map, so we see the exact same thing unfolding in front of us down here. But once that we have a few more talents in, Tracer is going to run the show. And we have, as expected, Life Leech taken from Tassadar on level 4. With a different setup and a different damage dealer, it would have been very likely Armor instead on level 4, so that the front line can be kept alive a little bit longer. Urel is also reacting with a gift to the Naru here. And in addition to that, and again, a setup against Malfurion. Yeah, no face checking bushes with that hero, Podiboss. Top side, Mai still in a bit of trouble and is heavily pushed back. And it gets possibly taken down here. So Tracer already getting a kill. And now that we have the triple altar up, there is a chance for them to grab two even. But they are putting pressure onto uh, that bell tower and that in and of itself is already a huge threat. So towards the top right, with Kidney in position, down here two versus two setup. As Malfurion is zoning out Sephiro, at least trying to. And up at the top, they let Alarak channel, interrupt it for as long as they can. Tanuf is currently doing that. And in the meantime, Hanzo has been eliminated at the bottom. And at the top, that fort is still being taken down. Nice lockdown against Tracer, but the AB gets away, gets a shield. And now Blikitni is helping him out too. Down to the bottom, Mungo is actually going really aggressive against Pody Boss and Zadun. He needs to be really careful there. If he gets locked down through a power slide and then maybe even a root, he might just be in trouble. So they're still playing around the top. Tracer the entire time, just more and more damage. And bot side, Malfurion gets the channel. So now we're looking at two altars already taken. They're looking to get even a third at the top. Or at least delaying it for as long as they can so that Malfurion can push the bot side out a little bit more and deny more experience to Finland. Yeah, Mango gets the channel through finally. DAB again with the damage nearly gets the kill against Sephiro and just jumps out before he himself is eliminated. Another camp pushing in. Diablo moved to the bottom of the map to catch some experience, but you can already tell. They're roughly a level ahead. They also won the first battle of altars. And now DAB is just zipped ping around the entire time doing a ton of damage. I mean, he should be top damage in the game already right now. 13,000, yeah. 
You compare the damage outputs here and just look at the numbers that we're seeing for Poland and Finland. And this is going to increase. DAB again against Alarak here. All right, telekinesis. There's a bomb connect and he nearly gets the kill. Yeah, he <laughs> again, there is a reason why Tracer is banned out against him continuously. And obviously, thanks to the pick and ban patterns before the first double rotation for Poland, they not, e they not only do they get Tracer, they get Tracer with Tassada and with Malfurion. It really doesn't get any better than that if you're a Tracer player. This is the best lineup that you can possibly have in a normal composition. Yeah, the next kill attempt against Rico and... Oh, <laughs> Dibbles gets away! Nice save here. Well done. So that was already a big one. Making sure that he is able to move out of harm's way. Another combo attempt from Alarak as he's trying to make his own move against DAB. Uh, but Tracer, as we said previously, is still fine. With level 7 abilities now on both sides ready, we're looking at level 10 for the next talent. And this is actually getting closer and closer for Poland. They push the top lane already aggressively, but of course the main goal is to claim control over the bottom of the map so that you have two cam pumpkin camps pressure the core directly and this is exactly what they're looking for DAB sidestepping the combo again moving in with extra damage against Hanzo and Hanzo gets out this is one of the things when you're playing Tracer this is actually something that has a lot been asked especially when you are play when HUC was still around how should you use your bomb on Tracer and the answer that you did hear from pretty much every single pro being it DAB being it Poik or anyone else is always throw that thing out Always drop the damage. Don't try and save it for a kill. Try to deliver as much damage as you can, even if you can't get the kill with the hero. Just by you taking an opponent down incredibly low, you will put them into a defensive position and it's worth a lot. And eventually it's going to come through. And just look how defensive they have to play now the entire time as Tracer just jumps in, connects one bomb after another. And here comes the level 10 abilities. They're trying to counterplay that though. Yeah, silence against Tracer. Maybe a chance now. Not quite. Ults are in though. And we have the deadly charge for Alarak. Junkrat is still rotating around. Obviously Lucio has now... Ooh, that's actually an arrow that could have potentially taken down Tassada. With that stun, they might have been able to claim his life. But Tuluf is still in play. And now they're pushing in again. And the entire time here, Tracer, just just look at Tracer, seriously. Just look at Tracer the entire time. He switches from target to target, from kill to kill, and the damage output is absolutely nasty. Switching over to Mai at this point, the lockdown is already there. In comes another stun attempt from Diablo, Lightning Breath, but Tracer takes down Urel. And he goes deeper with another kill, the second Tracer kill. DAB, no fucks given, no hit points, no problem. He comes in and he just drops you. He takes everything. He takes your car, your girlfriend, your lunch money and your life. 31,000 damage for him, nearly doubling the damage output of Hanzo at this point. But at least a counter kill. Malfurion for the second time now has been eliminated. And that means that DAB has currently no support outside of Tassadar. Good wall stun, great wall stun, but DAB still gets out. And continues with the damage. Continues with the damage as Junkrat gets the pumpkin camp and is going for the first channel. ETC gets stun locked for a moment and that's the kill opportunity. But four shots are already fired against Finland's core as Junkrat got the channel through. Mango doing the same thing at the bottom of the map. So we have 24 points against 28. Four kills against three. Still quite close when it comes to those numbers. But of course, when you look at the momentum on this map, then it's already pretty clear that Poland is starting to gain a bit of an advantage. Forts or bell towers have been severely damaged, and they're starting to go straight in down to the bottom. In we go. Right now, here comes the defense. Tracer is again looking for an opportunity to get maybe a bit of damage through and lock another target in. 117 sadism stacks on Chikabawa. Best name, by the way. Boom, Chikabawa! And Pody Boss is inting. Pony Boss is not a support. <laughs> I mean, the guy is literally an off lane that is playing the support role for his team. Mai at the top. My, my, is Tracer in trouble now? Uh, Urel, I mean. Tracer's not in trouble. Tracer is in a really good position, and Urel is down. And we also have to move mid side, just saying, okay, I'm gonna get the damage in here. But they're trading, they're trading bell towers, and the bot lane control is important. And Finland is actually doing. Finland is honestly doing a much better job here than they did against the Netherlands, in my opinion. 
this series is looking way better than what they did in the series against Netherlands. Uh, at least in my personal opinion. They definitely stepped it up here quite a bit. But they're going up against a very different beast right now. The Bell Tower Exchange, top and bot lane is what we've seen so far. So there's a Bell Tower for Bell Tower. But the remaining two Bell Towers for Finland are both incredibly low. On the left side, I mean. So yeah, there comes the lockdown attempt against ETC. Black Kidney is moving in now too. Mosh Pit! And oh my god, Lucio just moved into it. Hanzo is down. There's the Twilight Dream. Immediately Malfurion dies again. And Mai is about to explode too. Urel is dead and Tracer is just zipping around from right to left, from left to right, trying to go for additional kills. She gets another one against Alarak, gets the shield, the sustain is there. And DAB is just rocking it to the Benny Hill theme at this point. Down goes the next four, the next bell tower. Blikitney is already rocking the one at the bottom of the map. 46,000 damage now by Tracer. And they are actually trying to go for the full on barrage at this point. Nobody is even going for that altar until this is done. They get the one at the bottom left. Tracer is sitting towards the middle. Could maybe go for the channel. Top side, four heroes are trying to reclaim at least one of the bell towers that Finland has lost so far. But this isn't looking pretty at all. There's the channel. That's six shots fired right now. Bot lane gets taken too, just as the top is reclaimed. 16 in their hands, two levels ahead. And a great position, of course, for Poland as they get more and more momentum going with now six pumpkins pushing through the bot lane. Jumping in again, wall after wall comes through. DAB gets stunned and locked down for just a second. But the shield is there from Tassada as he enables Tracer once more. Riku gets dropped low. Mai is jumping in, trying to change the outcome of this fight. But it's starting to get nasty, especially with them being pressured against the Pumpkins once more. Mungo and his Lucio is also in trouble. Everybody's low, but they get the lockdown against Malfurion again. That's another kill against Podipos. Sefiro nearly dies as Blake Kidney sees another opportunity to connect the bomb and takes it. But there's the kill against Lucio. Lucio down, the support eliminated. Rico and Shikabawa are both low and the shots are still being fired continuously as we look at 18 points on the core against 28. Level 16, not quite ready yet for Finland, but soon it will be. And already Blick Hitney jumping straight up into the middle and towards the top saying, well boys, I'm gonna try and get one of these bell towers here back. So right now, more AOE damage is already coming in as Taluf is also working on the completion of his quest. On level 1, another 70 stacks are missing, 65 to be exact. And then he can carpet the floor with the psionic echo and a lot of additional damage. And top side, Blake Kidney is pushing this out too. So yeah, 16 talents versus 16, triple altar on the map. 5 versus 3 advantage in bell towers for Poland against Finland. In theory, they could drop them down to 3 points now. And on the damage numbers, we have now 63,000 for Tracer. Doubling the damage output of Alarak. The uh, best damage dealer on the side of Finland. Yeah, yeah. Three shots fired. Tassada is at the bottom of the map. He's going to get the five through for his team. And Blikitne is currently playing it out against the top. Nice wall stun from Riku again. Here comes the Reptire. Straight in. Hits two. And Tracer still firing away. Trying to connect some damage. Nice ult from Lucio. That helped for now. They're still not out of this yet, and the channel is going to happen for Poland. They were trying to interrupt it as long as they could, but eventually they have to move away from this one. This is exactly what we're seeing right now. Nearly 70,000 damage now for DAB. And he comes in again. And they're already playing on around Riku. Yeah, there's a mosh pit attempt, but immediately interrupted just through the channel on the mini cooldown, so they have another chance on it. <laughs> it's kind of funny, by the way, that pretty much only Malfurion died so far on the side of the red team. I guess ETC has also been eliminated once, but let's face it, that's actually a pretty decent stat for Zadun, considering that he is the only frontliner, the only melee hero on this team right now. The damage comes out again. Here comes the push in. They want to fight on the spot. ETC in trouble and might be taken down, but he slides away with 40 HP. But good job by Finland. They take at least the camp away from their opponent. Nicely done. Like that. Good job from them. Yeah, they're actually playing really confident here. And I have to stress it again. I feel they're playing so much better than they did against the Netherlands. This is looking way, way better what they're currently pulling off here. They are only a level behind against Poland. That's not bad by any means. 
Yeah, Malfurion maybe inting a little bit in parts of this game, but still. Yeah, good wall stun again. The arrow doesn't connect though, but Tassada still goes down, and there's the second attempt, and <laughs> Tracer gets away. Ah, but I gotta admit that Riku is doing a great job, especially now that he has his level 16. He went for a great one-shot opportunity here and took down Tassada, and that was super important. Now they're going for the boss. They're down to 8 points on the core against 25, so that's a good move to be made by them. Especially since Tassada is still gone, and they are most likely going to walk away with this. I don't think that Poland, despite the fact that they are ahead, are going to try and go for it here. But they're actually pulling it off! Mosh Pit interrupted again! Rip Tire, Alarak is down! Don't tell me they actually take it. Zedun falls, it's a 4 versus 5! DAB! <laughs> He's going to die. Yes, DAB goes down. It's a 4 versus 5. They can't make that happen. They're trading kills. It's actually... They win the fight. It's three kills against two in their favor. But they lost the boss. So the four shots were fired against them. But it's unbelievable that they actually were able to win that fight. So now they're still trying to get another kill in. But Riku and Sephiro and Hanzo and Diablo are walking away down to the bottom of the map to get the channel here. Against Storm Talents in a 3 versus 2 situation. That's a little bit ballsy though. That's a very optimistic play. So they have to move away from it. And there's the wall and there's the kill. A grenade to the face, baby. That's the end of Hanzo. And that's another 4 shots fired against Finland's core. Which drops them down to 4 remaining points. Boom. And Tracer actually has fallen once. So, they were, I can't believe that they went into a 4 versus 5 here. But yeah, there we have it. 93,000 damage by Tracer now. And also, another Bell Tower claimed. They still are level ahead, 5 kills ahead. And on top of this, they have Storm Talons. So, that means Tracer has even more damage output. With the Get Stuff that I assume was taken. And yes, of course, indeed. Get Stuffed and the Force Barrier. Uh, after they took the one at the bottom, they go for the Bell Tower straight in the middle. And if they can take the one at the top, that would of course start the endless barrage here. Camps are actually attacked right now. Okay. Uh, ETC was trying to go for a blink, slide and ult. Not quite, but they steal the camp. Yeah, they steal the camp. This one can't be taken. And now they're trying to escort it through at the bottom of the map. Wouldn't quite end the game. They would still do a lot of work here. And they're of course looking for the damage again. Alarak with the combo and Zappa Tracer paying attention. Walls everywhere. The Donald would be proud as Tassada is building them in record time. Level 20 talent makes it super easy for him. Bomb not connecting this time. But the shots are fired and that puts the core down to one point. All three pumpkins just made it through. And the core is on a single point against the 21 that we see for Poland. This is the moment where they want to go for the checkmate. There's a double altar about to spawn. They try to take the pumpkins now too. The arrow comes in. In comes also Diablo. And the ult for Malfurion. Oh, the mosh pit. And this time it's a disaster. Down they go. Hanzo, Urel, Lucio and Diablo. Alara gets killed too. That's a five-man wipe. And the Polish team is dancing. Time to dance, baby. Bot lane is going to finish the deal one way or another and apparently it's party time for the Polish boys right now. They know that the game is over. Leftover sprays are coming through everywhere. The pew 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 from DAB. Can't blame him for this one. I mean he has a hundred thousand damage on his tracer so pretty impressive. And here come the pumpkins and one is all you need and this is game as the dance continues. GG and well played as Poland takes the victory in game number one. Game number two, Poland against Finland. And the Finnish team, they stepped it up. They definitely did. Unfortunately for them, they go up against a very different beast and one of the best teams that we have in the tournament now. The Polish team. But I have to admit that Podiboss on the support seems a bit weird. And his Malfurion was more than a little bit YOLO. That old man definitely going, went for more than one Sudoku moment right there. Sat down in the middle of the lane and tried to solve a math puzzle while eating damage. So <laughs> not, quite, not quite the hero that usually see Podiboss on and probably for a good reason. 
Tassada gets banned. Uh, word of advice to Finland. If you really want to make sure that DAB doesn't play Tracer, then please pl ban out Tracer, not Tassada. DAB doesn't give a flying fuck if he has Tracer support, uh, Tassada support or not. He is going to play, ta uh, um, he is going to play Tracer one way or another if he really wants to. If he still plays it on this map, that's a different story. There's Malfurion as a first pick. And they could still play Tracer, and I guess at this point he's just begging, come on guys, this is the only time that I actually get to play my hero, please pick it, no matter what happens. But yeah, uh, Uther gets banned out as well, that's actually a bit of a weird one. I mean, we've seen a little bit more Mimi, Uther on the side lane, some of it semi-serious, some of that more of a joke. But yeah, uh, here comes, first of all, ETC, and what else do we get? Rega. There is still the chance that Poland is also going to take this a little bit more lighthearted now that they're heading into the second game and now already 1-0 since they probably assume that they as the favorite will get a 2-0 here. So we've seen some teams spec then into out of the box heroes. We've seen a few Gazlos, uh, Novas and other stuff but there's DAB. Straight again. Malfurion, Tracer and uh, Blickhitney says okay give me Junkrat. I could have seen him go into my F by the way. Hasn't played my F in, in a hot minute, and my F was always one of the best heroes of Blick Kidney, so that would have been another option. But yeah. If you think you can soft ban Tracer by eliminating Tacita, think again. Ain't happening. They could still pick Zarya, by the way, so I would more. I, I probably would have banned Zarya over Abathar, even though I grant that both heroes will would support Tracer very well. But DAB, he doesn't really care, I assume. I think Zarya is an option, but it's not a must-have for them, in in no way. Okay, Poland trying to rock it now. Gulgan gets banned. That means no Horrify, and also the wave clear on the shrine is a bit lower. No Johanna pick, by the way, so far. I guess the Dune is gonna pick Johanna, unless Chikabawa goes for side lane etc. Which is most likely going to happen. I mean, Riku hasn't picked the hero yet, and he's in the main tank for the team. But if he doesn't pick Johanna right now, Zadun is most likely going to do it in the next rotation. Sylvanas. And Chen! Okay, so. Do they go for a trip? I mean, I guess they are switching Chikabawa's hero over. But let's see. Sylvanas is in. Against the Tracer setup. And here come the last two picks. So I would say Johanna, most likely. And I'm a little bit still on the fence of what exactly Taluf is going to go for. Are we going to see Leo together with that? Or are they just going to add uh, Zarya and provide the shield after all? Not. Melganis and Blaze. Both fine. Both absolutely cool here. But yeah, Melganis. Yeah, it's a good setup for our potential Riptire. Ooh, Medivh against the Tracer Bomb. Okay. Can they pull that Medivh pick off though? That's the bigger question. But yeah, it's interesting to see Riku now in a mid -deep position instead of him having a tank available after he did a pretty decent job on Diablo on the last map. But either way, Infernal Shrines, map number two, so let's jump in and see what the Polish team can pull off and if Finland can fight back here. Game number two in our best of three. Finland against Poland. And on the left side, Sefiro and Silvanas, Mango on Rega, Mai on Chen. Chikapa wow on ATC and Riku on Medivh. To the right side of the map, we currently look at Pody Boss on Malfurions, Dune on Mulganus, Blake Kidney on Junkrat, and DAB again has Tracer locked in for himself, whereas Taluf is playing Blaze on the side lane for. I won't say the bunker value, which we normally can assume here, but this has been a bit of a Mimia series, so I could see some interesting heroic abilities coming out if some of the players want to spice it up a little bit. But we'll find out. For now, uh, eyes on Tracer again. Obviously, this is a little bit more difficult for DAB in this game compared to the last, but still, there's our setup, and DAB is immediately added. He needs to be more careful. I mean, the Tracer Bomb shouldn't really get as much damage this time, just simply because Medivh can counteract it with his own shield. And on top of that, you're obviously also missing the shields from Tacita. That is going to make it a bit more difficult for DAB to go balls deep in these situations. So he needs to be cautious with this. But either way, they have a great setup here. And they're already using it straight against ETC. You can see how pressured Finland is. The pressure applies, in comes Blake Kidney, and Chicka Bow Wow goes boom as Blake Kidney gets the kill. 
Yeah, that was a quick one. That was a very quick one. And especially the bird needs to be a bit cautious with this, aka Medivh, because he wants to complete his stacks. But Pody Boss, can he redeem himself for his Malfurion performance on the last map? Does he even care? That's the next question. He's still playing in his support role and it's kind of funny to see him on Malfurion. How many times did he die in the last map? Six times or something? I mean, again, frontline Malfurion confirmed. Now the setup against DAB, but the heals are there. There's already a bit of a stun and the option to go for even more damage with Tracer. Now, this is Infernal Shrine. It's a different map, of course. There is still the option of pressuring with the Punisher if you get him and have Sylvanas in your midst. So Finland is going to try and rock and roll the objective so they can play through that. Uh, still the attack against ETC. Gets zoned out and the portal. Yeah, <laughs> it's a bit tricky. I mean, so far it's only a single kill for Poland, but you can't really help but feel that every single time they get away down here at the bottom of the map, it could have been a kill. It always seems incredibly close. Now they go to the top again, and safely was pressure too. But as it stands, both teams on level 4. And now with a parting gift on Tracer, and DAB still zipping around, gets a bit more damage in, and V calls out of harm's way. So, yeah. I guess Meganus is going to be fine. He's not going to run into any problems. So, top right. Already the camps are taken. Shaman camp. First shrine spawns top side. So that's also another thing to definitely get acknowledged here. Damage output. Hey, it's a bit too early. We already have the 6,000 damage for our Tracer. But you can tell that the Panda is also accumulating quite a bit of damage top side against his counterpart, Blaze. But still, Tracer is very likely going to run away with the damage numbers quite soon. But DAB, he needs to be a bit more cautious. He can't go as deep as he could in the last game. That Tacita shield is still missing. And mostly the level 4, just having that self-sustain available is always a bit of an issue. Blaze now at the bottom of the map, fighting it out against Sylvanas, whereas everybody else is slowly rotating towards the top and starting to take position on the first objective. Uh, Mai is jumping in with Chen, and well, here we go. So 26 stacks for Medivh. Tracer still looking for a target. Has to be very careful around ETC. That power slide is a threat. Especially if someone else is going to jump on you shortly after that. Yeah, it? Oh, it gets out of it. And now Chikabawa wow, is in a bit of trouble. Immediate portal control here with Junkrat. So he's going to try and use that as best as he can. And on top of that, they obviously have now Malfurion too. Talking Malfurion. DAB is about to go down and is getting eliminated. Yeah, Polybos sleeping on the job here a little bit. There was no heal for Tracer at all. So he was trying to zip around the opponent, but absolutely no chance for that happening. Now Zadun has to uh, tap the A2, but there is a lead for Finland now, or will be in just a moment. They have a 5 versus 4. And in this case, it's a 5 versus 3 because Blaze is still rotating. It seems like Poland is actually going to give this one up. Yes, they do. They want to get the additional experience, which is actually happening. A wave is lost at the bottom of the map to the blue team, but they're going to walk lightly away with the first Punisher in this game. Here's a level 7 talent for both teams. Blaze comes in as well, though. They're still trying to fight over it. Tracer is back too, and there's a lockdown against the Panda, but everybody else is also on the run. The problem is it's 34 points against 25. They're still trying to get the objective, and they should actually be able to pull that off. 35 against 30. Uh, granted, Poland might still able, be able to grab it. Depends on the zone out now. But here we go. There's the portal. They try to move in. 38. And oh my god, Poland actually gets it. And they have the chance to go for the next kill. Chikabawa is there, but Poland with the aggression now. Napir Daloy as they jump straight in for ETC. The cow is going to go down. And the Punisher wants a piece of the action too. Chen has rotated in the meantime. ETC finally falls, but they push through the top, and without the tank, there's a big problem, because that also means no stun. And Sylvanas is jumped right straight into, into the stun. And this is a disaster. Down they go, two eliminated, and this is the end of the fort, of course, as well. Level 9 versus level 8, and the fort is Gonzo. Chen, already at the bottom of the map. Damage output, 16k for Tracer. She's doing her thing. And half a level is missing until level 10. They're stealing the opponent's lunch money as well. AKA the Shaman Camp. Ooh, 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 ooh Mongo! <laughs> Juicy play. Yeah, Tracer nearly got a kill there. We're hoping for the parting uh, gift to deliver the final blow, which did not happen. 
But still, here come the level 10 abilities. And still the bunker being picked. No meme talents. No meme talents on level 10. But instead, more camps taken. More camps, more experience, and more GG. That's exactly what they're looking for now. Still half a level missing for Finland before they grab, grab heroic uh, abilities themselves. They have a completed quest talent on Medivh at least, so that's obviously fantastic. But they are still under pressure here. The panda has now to react to the top of the map. Which allows the rest of the team to pressure through the middle, which is exactly what they're doing here. DAB just sliding from the left to the right, the right to the left, always outside of the range of ETC to make sure that the power slide is not going to threaten him here anytime soon. Shields are coming out, there's a quick setup against ETC, and Shikibawa Wow is in trouble, but survives for now. Heroic abilities are in, and here's the Polymorph. So DAB has to be careful now, even more so. Polymorph is in, but well, as we're talking about being careful, there's the setup. In comes CTC. Nice save, but they are not able to get a kill. It was a good move with the Mosh Pit, and then the follow up from Medivh, but they couldn't get a kill out of this one. And Blaze is at the same time still pushing the top lane. It's still a 4 versus 5 that we're now looking at. Good rip tire connect. They're trying to push this again up to the top. Blaze came in too with a jet propulsion. Triple panda time. And they might just get the kill against Melganis. And he gets his ult out just before that happens. But he's still rather low. And DAB is hunting them down and gets the kill against Medivh. Medivh eliminated and now it's DAB time. He gets the second kill against Sylvanas. They focus on him but he is able to escape. And this time Malfurion is there with the heal. Zedun gets out too, just as he's able to escape that fort. Mai is low, and Tracer finds value at the bottom of the map now, escorting another wave straight into the tower and the fort. And talking forts, the one in the middle of the map is pretty much taken down now. Five kills against one. And ladies and gentlemen, it's the Tracer show. If you ever wanted to watch a real good Tracer player and maybe copy some of that style, just check out DAB. He is absolutely dominating on the hero. Yeah? Can do it with Tassada, can do it without Tassada. He already has 28,000 damage. Junker is still chipping in too. Zedun, by the way, gets saved. That was a close call, he nearly went down. And they're still body blocking Chikabawa into Oblivion and another kill and more damage. That's the setup right here with the next fort exposed. Not quite eliminated yet, but also a shrine is activating. And level 13 talents are now giving Poland another advantage as if they needed another one. So, mid lane, and towards the top, Likidin is just saying, Boys, I'm kind of done with this shit, this is getting a little bit boring. I don't want to kill heroes anymore, I'm going to go full PvE right now. I'm going to show you how I can set up my grenades to take down a few of these minions here. It's like, look at that, full boss mode. This is going to be what Diablo 4 looks like, right here. Uh, well, ETC, and then again, is already starting to slide in too. The problem is they're heavily behind. Tracer! Oh, oh, that's a nice move. And even the mosh pit attempt didn't work out, but the AB is low, and he survives. Polymorph, they unload everything on him. Can he get out? Where's that power slide? There it is. And he's actually escaping. You gotta be shitting me. Polyboss might fall. No, he turns around and takes down Sylvanas with the help of Junkrat. And now they're chasing them one after another again. The bomb connects. Nice move from Medivh, keeping the boy, the dog alive up to the point where Ancestral Healing unfolds its value. Junkrat has already retreated back towards the shrine to get the Punisher. But good attempts from Finland. But they still can't lock the AB down. It's honestly insane. They unleashed everything. Their stuns, the mosh pit, the polymorph. The only objective here seemed to be kill Tracer. Whatever you do, and if we all die, screw it. But make sure that Tracer goes down. Screw the cavalry. Take the horses away. We don't care. Just make sure that that hero finally falls. 15 and a half. And with the objective, they go in for ETC. And Tracer takes that one easy peasy. Comes in, delivers the final blow. ETC is down and there's another kill, this time against Medivh himself. The wall is opened up, level 16 is nearly there and Poland is absolutely crushing through this now. They have everything in their hands, the keep will fall and at this point a nice lockdown from Alfurion. Zedun says Jinkuye and takes the kill. 
Rega goes down, so does the keep, and well, slowly but steadily, so do the hopes and dreams of Finland to maybe bring this to a third game. There was at times a two talent advantage for Poland. Now the setup again, the dune alive, the core shields are slowly falling, but they get the kill against Malgadis. Chen falls too as Tracer is going for the shenanigans once more. Mitif is already on the run, trying to get away from Tracer as quickly as possible, as he was very, very low here. But we have Tranquility being set up. There's also another Ancestral to keep ETC alive, but they get some additional damage in against the core. And DAB is still trying to go for the next kill, trying to go for Sylvanas. Can't quite get the kill here, but they get a few points off the opponent's core. They won't be able to end the game here, though. Yeah, they won't be able to make that happen. But they're still sticking around a bit longer than expected. And honestly, they get way more damage than I expected. Core is down to 69%. I thought they would scratch it a little bit, but I didn't really expect them to take such a massive chunk out of that hit point pool. So, still four levels ahead. And Triple Panda is now coming in. Uh, Storm, Earth and Fire gets unleashed once again. At the Rip Tire, immediately to take them out. DNB on the run. There's the bunker at least. DAB a little bit low, jumps out, nearly take down Sylvanas and barely makes it into the bunker before escaping again. They try to get the kill against ETC and indeed they do. Junkrat shows no mercy here. Grenade after grenade gets connected. Now they go for the Panda again. Medivh is eliminated as Tracer gets another kill and the Panda dies too. 53,000 damage by Tracer. 37,000 by Sylvanas and they are pushing through the middle again this time clearly aiming for the core itself and it seems like it's going to be the end of this series. Zedun is zoning everybody out at the Nexus entrance itself and the shields are falling quickly. Melgadis might not make it, not quite sure but I can tell you that Sylvanas is definitely not going to make it that's a kill right there. Malfurion this time actually the one with the last hit and catapults are already on the core. Blaze is firing away, they are 4 levels ahead, 15 kills against 2, 50% on the core. The shields are there again. Blakitni dies, but they're still getting the damage in and the core is down to 40% right now. Yeah, nice jet propulsion setup, but Medivh provides the shield and Rega the Ancestral. The catapults are still doing the damage though. Nobody's taking care of them and that's the end of the game and the end of the series. Poland with a 2-0 victory against Finland. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video and I hope that you enjoyed the match and the commentary. The remaining time of the video has been added to protect against spoilers caused by the length of the video itself. But please keep in mind though that this does not only mean more work for me but also has a negative impact on the popularity of the videos and the channel because of YouTube's algorithms. It would be greatly appreciated if you'd consider supporting the channel and help me to continue the daily esports coverage by clicking the join button below the video or supporting me through the Proterium page linked in the video description. Thanks a lot for the support and see you guys next time.